Hello, this is Ken Small with SSA Architecture in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, this is number three in a series of uh, videos that I made about installing and designing solar on my own house. And um, what this uh, is going to be about is the plans that we submitted to the building uh, permitting process and how we did the design, what the decision making process was on the design. In the course of looking at the plans, I'll explain um, why it is the way it is, and um, then after this group about design and plans are done, there's going to be uh, another group that talks about the physical installation and how things were actually built out in the field. So um, a plan set for the Las Vegas area is fairly common of what you'll see throughout the United States. There's some uh, basic items that you have to have on the plan set. Um, this is a little bit above and beyond what an installer would do if you have a professional installer because we're architects we tend to include a little bit of stuff that may not be necessary just to make sure that we had everything that was needed when we filed and not have it rejected and have to resubmit. So there might be a little bit of extra info in here mostly on the showing what the existing conditions of the house are. So, uh, from what I told you before, the house was built in the 70s and uh, the solar is, was added on in um, late 2016. We actually did it just at the end of December and um, so these drawings were drawn well before that and it was kind of a back and forth effect be between finding products and materials that we wanted to use and um, what the conditions were at the house that drove this whole process. So. Um, this is the cover sheet, the first page, and what I have here is uh, the location where we are in the Las Vegas Valley, and then uh, a site plan, overall site of the house, just showing uh, where the house is, and the area of the work on the house, and then this is a front elevation that shows what the neighbors will be seeing, where the solar panels are on the roof, and then uh, this is some code analysis information, uh, talking about the area of the site and that we have enough parking and all the other things that you wouldn't think matter but they do to some building departments so they're included. And then up here I have solar related codes, the, the information that we're actually designing the solar to comply with. Um, this here is the stamp that the building department puts on the plans. Uh, locally refer to it as red stamp set which means that it was approved by the building department. So um, the next sheet is an enlargement of the overall site plan and here you get a better idea of where we're working and um, basically uh, north is up here and so we have the uh, house as it stands and an addition that was built here and so uh, a lot of the house the roofs are facing either east or west and we don't actually have a due south facing roof. Um, this area of the roof here in the back, that is a flat roof and so it could be suitable for a solar but frankly the way the roofing was installed I just didn't want to get into it. Um, we may add some more solar panels on there in the future but uh, I didn't think very well of whoever originally designed that addition on the house which was not me and the way that they uh, figured out where all the rainwater would go and everything. So it didn't present as a good candidate for a solar installation without doing quite a bit more work. Um, this area here over the garage was an ideal place to put it. It's facing uh, west of south and uh, there's enough room on there for approximately 22 panels which seem to be enough to do peak shaving, which is really what your maximum uh, return on investment when you're in a city, and this is a city area, even though it's called Clark County. Um, this is just a regular residential subdivision. Fairly rarely are we out of power for more than just a few minutes. And that's usually just somebody ran into a light pole or transformer uh, went down in the summertime or something like that. And um, so, uh, we have this area which is fairly ideally located. It's facing west of south, uh, enough room for a fair amount of panels. I'll show you in the calculations how we came to that conclusion later on. 
and then um, immediately adjacent to where our electric service is coming in, and there's room in the garage for installing the uh, inverter and the other equipment. So uh, that makes the runs, the uh, electrical uh, line runs, really short, which is also good for your line losses, not to mention your upfront cost, because the less distance you have to go, the less wire you have to buy. Um, up here, we just included for the building department a photograph of the existing service so that they could see what the situation is. There are many, many subdivisions in Vegas that are built this way, so there wasn't a great need to go into a lot of detail of what this is because the inspectors in the building department have seen it 10,000 times. Um, next drawing are, is an enlargement of the area of the roof that we're talking about doing the solar design on. So here we are, this is just a blow up of one area of the roof, and this has got the design on it. And um, so what's happening here is we're showing uh, 22 panels, and then we're, this is a design of a roof penetration to show that where the wires come in through the roof it won't leak. The electricians actually didn't want to install it that way, but we needed it to um, convinced the building department that we weren't going to install wires improperly and the inspector was kind enough to allow them to do it another way out in the field as they chose. So what's happening here is this is high and this is low so my garage door is over here and then we have three rows of panels which are do not have the same number of panels in each row because we have a valley coming across here so we're just fitting them on there as best we can. Um, when I designed this, I had quite a few options. If you had installed uh, uh, solar panels a few years back in Las Vegas, a lot of people were install installing 250 watt panels, even close to 200 watt panels. I've met people that have panels that are less than 200 watts. But um, what was available for me was uh, somewhere between 260 and 350 per panel. Um, there are two different kinds of panels that uh, uh, are common. The uh, one panel has uh, 72 cells, and that's the one that we chose. It's the larger panel, and the reason why we chose that is you wouldn't be able to get more panels if you use the smaller panels. And since they have fewer cells, the smaller panels have fewer watts per panel and we wanted to try to maximize what we could get on the roof. Um, just a little warning, if you're under the International Building Code, there's some obscure language in there about allowing three feet uh, around it, and in Vegas we have an exception to that, so you might not want to go so close to the edge as we have here, but in this case we were able to do that. Um, one of the problems here is that on a house that's over 40 years old, all of the roofing material had been redone, replaced throughout the entire house due to various remodels from the previous owners and the addition that I put on, except this one area. And so this one area had a 40 plus year old roof. Um, we had to rip the entire roof off, cross our fingers and hope that the substrate was good, and then start back from the substrate to install the panels. So we were lucky. Uh, some years it doesn't even rain at all in Vegas, so you don't have much roof substrate problems on a roof that has enough slope. And in this case we didn't, there weren't any slope substrate problems, so we carefully removed the roofing tiles and we put down a new roof and then we installed the panels. So you'll see that on the installation portion. Um, here's some calculations regarding the panels that we chose. So uh, I picked 320 watt panels. Why? I was shopping on eBay. And so got a really super killer deal on uh, 30, 320 watt panels. And uh, actually bought 24 of them, so that I would have a couple extras if something got messed up or broken. And actually that was good news because one of them did get broken in transit and the seller was very good about uh, uh, giving me a credit back but had I not gotten extras and then some were damaged then I'd be left with non-matching roof panels or trying to buy more panels from 
another source because 24 is what this source had at the time. After we install these, we have one spare. So uh, 320 watts per panel, 22 panels equals about 7,000. And then I figure about 15% in losses due to not having the ideal angle on the roof and also not facing the ideal angle to the south and also just regular line losses and inverter losses and so on. So ballpark, I figure I'm going to lose about 15%, maybe 20, and that leaves me with a 6,000 watt system. So um, next we're going to take a look at the drawings that involve the inverters and the single line diagram. So uh, here's the diagram that I ended up with and basically um, this is the um, inverter that Solar Edge sells standard. And then they're set up so that they have two strings of panels coming to the inverter. And that's the way we maintained it. Now I didn't want to change their diagram too much because I didn't want to ha hire an electrical engineer to try to analyze all this for me. So what we did is, since each one of these strings will handle more panels than we actually have, uh, one will handle 14 and the other one will handle 15 and since 14 plus 15 is 29 and we only have 22 um, what I did is I turned these into dashed and I showed them as future planned so that on the electrical side if we do decide to put another uh, group of panels on another roof that's say facing east or west or even the flat roof then we've already shown the electrical department I mean the plan review department at the building department on the, this electrical sheet that the system has the additional capacity. And then we didn't have to redo the drawing completely to show less panels. So here we have one string of panels which are labeled A1 through uh, 11, I'm sorry, 1A through 11A and then we show up to 14 in future plan and then a second string uh, which are all wired together that are 1B through 11B with up to 15 in future capacity. So everything goes from that into the inverter and then from the inverter it goes to a sub-panel. Now this is unique to my house. The reason why I have a sub-panel is because my main panel is full and it really doesn't have anything to do with uh, the solar installation except that that's the place where the breaker spaces were available for us to connect. So from this sub panel then we're showing connecting to the main panel and then through the meter and back to the grid. So this is a no battery backup system and uh, it connects directly to the grid which means that when we're producing too much energy during the daytime when I'm at work the local utility is paying us nearly nothing to buy our electricity and then at night when we don't have solar we're buying energy back at a premium. However, the way peak energy works in Vegas in the summertime we were seeing bills as high as 650 a month and so by shaving that 650 down to say 200 or 250 in the summertime when the pool pump is running, the jacuzzi heater is running, uh, two air conditioning central air units on my house are running, that's when you get your payback. The, the remainder of the year you're just saving a few dollars here or there and uh, it's not super significant because we're not home during the daytime. Now, uh, the reason why I went this way is that this uh, inverter that we selected from uh, Solar Edge is pre-designed to connect up to, for instance, the Tesla wall battery system. But uh, I'm a Tesla car owner and I know a lot about Teslas and I know quite a bit about batteries and the big important thing to know about batteries is the price of batteries is coming down every day dramatically. So if uh, you were going to spend uh, $320 on a 320 watt solar panel this year, five years ago you would have spent that per panel for a panel that had half the wattage. 
it's a similar situation with the batteries, meaning that uh, buying batteries five years from now or two years from now or who knows when is going to be a lot cheaper than this is. And so all I would have to do is buy something like that, connect it to this, and then I've got battery backup. So instead of selling power to the utility in the daytime when I'm not home and buying it back at night at a premium, I would just put power into the batteries and then at night take it out of the batteries. It's ready to do that, but we didn't feel like it was necessary and the payback was not very good and the investment was much higher and the other thing about batteries is the size of them it tends to be shrinking so we had kind of the storage space issue so we decided not to go for the battery backup at this point so uh, then these diagrams down here are for uh, the uh, rapid shutdown kit and what the rapid shutdown kit is something that I think is really really crazy but it's a mandate of most building codes and what it does is it causes the system to shut down when there's no power from the grid I know I have to say that over again so that you'll understand it when you will most want electricity when the grid is down the system is designed to shut itself down and they look at this as a safety issue that um, if there was a line worker outside your house and he thought the grid was down and there was no power in it and he was working on the grid and then your solar system was producing electricity and you didn't cut it off then you would be able to, to electrocute him inadvertently by pumping power into the grid so that's the reason now as I understand this if uh, all hell broke loose and we didn't have power for a week we could defeat it somehow and, and disconnect from the grid completely and operate it as an off-grid system, but I don't really imagine that's going to happen. And like I said before, if we're without power for 20 minutes in once or twice a summer, that's an unusual summer with a lot of being down. So we're not really concerned about insulating ourselves against that. It's more the issue of the batteries and how, how all that works. So. These are the wiring diagrams for the rapid shutdown kit, and um, you'll see that in the photography when we're installing out in the field. Um, next drawing here goes into how we're attaching on the roof. We use this uh, iron ridge uh, system. It's an all aluminum system. It's designed for a uh, asphalt shingle roof, which is what we put underneath the panels. And um, the reason why we did that is I was concerned about two things, the weight and the maintenance. And the old barrel tile that's on the roof now, uh, when you remove them and put them back, some of them break and then you don't tend to have enough to do a color match. And then the um, uh, asphalt shingles don't reflect heat up to the roof as much, and so, or, or through the solar panels, uh, overheating the solar panels and reducing their efficiency and um, so what we decided to do is to put down a 30-year warrantyable uh, asphalt shingle roof throughout the entire roof and then we just went around it with a boundary of the barrel tile to make it visually match the rest of the house so it worked great uh, so this fastening system that you see here shows how you attach through the asphalt shingles and then you have these uh, long um, channel-like members that are kind of an odd-shaped C-channel and they connect to the solar panels at the top and they connect to the angles that are fastened to the roof at the bottom and it was a real easy system to interconnect. Um, what I did is for my part um, I had roofers uh, remove the old roofing and install the new roofing and then I myself put in the flashing and the angles and then from there up, I had the electricians do that. Now, I could have done these uh, uh, Iron Ridge uh, horizontal rack system members myself, but by the time I got everything else done, I had had enough, and the roofer was willing to include that in his bid for a reasonable number. I mean, the electrician was, so we just decided to have the electrician do it. Um, 
So over here is the last drawing of our architectural plan set, and this is really just a floor plan. And we probably didn't need to include the whole floor plan, but since I had the floor plan on CAD uh, from the last edition that I built on, we decided just to reuse it. And the important part of this is we're just showing all the rooms as existing, and then down here we're showing where the new meter is and the uh, existing uh, sub-panel and the uh, main panel and the um, unmodified uh, existing uh, meter uh, box. So we're just showing where the bits and pieces are so that uh, the building inspector will know where the work is and he won't feel the need to wander through the house looking for other problems. So uh, this drawing you may not need, but as you can see there was uh, quite a few drawings in the whole process and quite a bit of decision making. Um, I'm, I have no relationship to Alt-E, but they did really, really good, uh, gave me a good price on it. One of the things that I super liked was that every time they sent me a proposal, the proposal had hot links on it. So you could click on the link in the proposal and it would take you either to their website or a manufacturer's website that showed you what the thing was. And a lot of those had videos with them that explained a lot of other details. So uh, Bramley was a great help to me and um, there are a few people that I couldn't have gotten this done without and uh, Baldi and Bramley were definitely instrumental. Um, there may be some competitors who are just as good but uh, like I said I, I communicated with uh, quite a few of them before I decided to go with all E. And uh, I'll be showing you uh, what the whole thing cost in the end and explaining more about the installation process going forward. My name is Ken Small and I'm with SSA Architecture in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I hope you'll give this a like down at the bottom. And I hope you'll look for our uh, web page and like SSA Architecture or uh, my other website, Architecture by Ken Small. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them or you can go to the SSA website and contact us. Um, I don't sell solar design services and uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert in solar design so all this is just background information for you. If we happen to design a house for you that has solar in it, we'll use an electrical engineer or a subcontractor for the design process to make sure that you have a much more professionally designed system than I did for myself, although everything turned out okay for me. I'm sure customers don't want to take that risk. So have a great day and please like us at the bottom.